up YouTubians? Gary with VW Jawbreaker. Today, we're back on the Baja. Uh, last little bit that we did on this Baja, we got the brakes going. Brakes actually work now. We have a pedal. We have emergency brake, which makes it a lot easier to kind of keep it held on this steep driveway. Um, I did not record any of that because I had my captain over there. My man, he's the one that did it. So today, what we're going to do is now that we got to stop and we need to get it going better it idles good but that's about it so most likely we got an issue here with the carburetor so i'm going to show levi how to go through the carburetor clean check that uh we'll go ahead and check points double check timing probably go ahead and throw some new plugs and wires at it change fuel filter stuff like that and we'll go from there to help give yourself a little bit of room here, let's pop the cap off. Oh, it gives you a tad bit more room. So it's just pulling that front nut right there. There's one in the back, and of course we pulled the throttle cable off. Fuel line's disconnected. Fuel line's actually got some cracks in it. No bueno, so we'll go ahead and get those swapped out too. Make it a little safer. We don't need it burning down, do we? No, I didn't think so. Definitely be interested to see what people think this carburetor is, what brand or what model. I know it's an MB, but it looks, honestly, you just got the single screw down there at the bottom for mixture. Almost looks like an old 28 pick or something, which if that's the case, that's really kind of choked down for 1600 dual port. So, I don't know, maybe we'll take the top off and see if there's any garbage down in there or something, but worst case, we could get the carb we can throw on there. I'll get out of your way so you can work, sir. <laughs> All right, take the top off and we'll see what's going on inside it. Like I said, it really looks like a 28 pick or something. There's no idle cutoff screw. There's no bypass screw. There's only just a mixture screw down at the bottom and that's it. I like the way the 28s were. So we'll go ahead and get the top pulled, see what's going on, see if there's anything inside that looks out of the ordinary. Now, I do have a different carburetor we can use. Not an ideal situation, but it'd definitely be probably a better carb than this one. And the fact that you can't kind of go when <laughs> you push the accelerator down, I'm sure the other one will be better than nothing. Definitely better than this one. Oh, I thought it was just this little area over here that came off. No, just pull it through. Oh, they're talking about this right here. No, the spring. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, now it's been on for a little while, so we may have to take the, the screwdriver. Just kind of tap the top lightly. Like this? Yep. Or maybe hold it for me. The car? Yep. Ta-da! Ta-da! It's a carburetor! All right, let's see what we got down in there. So what I do is just carefully kind of just lift the float out. Because I don't want to disturb stuff down in the bottom too much. There's some main jets down there at the very bottom. And to be honest with you, I'm not really seeing a lot of dirt. Mm -mm. So let me dump that out. And then should be a 14, I think. It's on the side carburetor. All right, now pull it down. Down. Down? Yeah, because you're going to loosen it. Thumb, tang, finger. All right, unthread it. And why do we take that off? Um, that's a good question. Because that's actually kind of the main jet for the whole thing. Knew it. So normally, on the later carburetors, you'd take this plug off, mm -hmm. and you would stick a screwdriver through inside the bolt of the main jet. These earlier styles have this. And that actually says a 110 main. We're not gonna mess with this carburetor. That's not gonna run right. 110 main, that, that's probably why it's such hesitation and runs like such crap. So, that's no bueno. All right, so dig into that box. We got another carburetor. This one? Yep. All right. 
So we're going to go ahead and set this one on there. I've already kind of gone through and did a bench clean. This is a 3031. Um, it's already got, I think, a 127 main jet in it, uh, 50 or 55 idle, and it's got the, I'm sorry, 55 idle, and I believe a 50 power or 60 power or something like that. So we'll go ahead and put this one on, and uh, we'll see if it's any better. Look at the size comparison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little baby compared to that one. Exactly, and this one's still smaller than a 34 pick 3. But I don't have a good 34 pick 3 here, so I figure we'll just try this one. Not like we're out much. All right, let's go slap it on there. Well, you can just see how it's like almost metal right here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of work it at an angle. Work it like at an angle like that, it'll come off. Kind of have to push down and go in an angle. Mm. I would, a razor blade's actually easy to use, but I don't want you to slice your fingers off. Wouldn't be the first time I slice my fingers off or use a razor blade. Oops. It's alright. Still some around here. We right, got most of it. Alright, good job. Take the rag out, flop it down. Did you get the gasket? No. Take so it get the carburetor. Uh, the gasket. Gasket on that. Pretty. Yep. Steady. Bam. Mm. All right, let's run it. Oh. Nice one. Thanks. Thanks. It's a 13. It is a 13. Yeah. Refractory nuts. No, I know. I I just reached up and grabbed the wrench. Oh. I'm glad it was a 13. Hey, the exhaust is cold now. Yes. I don't know how tight to have it. Pretty snug. Snug. Okay. Yep. If you tighten it too, too tight, it'll pop the clamp. It's probably it's good, right? That's probably good. All right, you got the carburetor on. We've got the wire hooked up for the choke and the idle cutoff and the wired up to the positive side of the coil so that energizes. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and check the points and then probably change plugs, wires, stuff like that, just preventative. And we have them and well, why not to be honest, right? All right, so first thing we're gonna do is find the number one plug wire because I like to bring it up to top dead center. So most all your stuff is usually marked past your side of the car. You got one, two, and then the other side is three, four. So we're gonna take this one here, number one plug wire, and come back around, and there we go. So number one is right up front where it should be. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this back around to top dead center, which we're almost there. What do I do with the wrench? Um, probably put it, probably put it away. Probably put it away. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. So I'm just going to turn this until we get back around top dead center, which would be our timing mark. Which is, I doubt you can see that. Timing mark is right here on the split of the case. So now we know we're at top dead center number one. And from there, we can go ahead and rip everything apart and figure it out. All right, go ahead and pull the rotor off. What, does it just pop off? Yeah, it slides up. That was easy. That was easy. And then that little dust cap can come out of the way. This? Yep. Okay, and there's your points down inside. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do, right now they look Should be open right there. We'll take, our, see moving. take our feeler gauge, 16 thousandths. Nowhere near open enough. As soon as you go to 
move it back around, it comes off that cam lobe. close and they actually look good so I think we'll just leave that be no pitting or corrosion they actually look brand new condenser looks new all right so something right? yeah so we'll go ahead and leave that alone the rotors definitely got some burn marks on it so we'll go ahead and pop a new rotor on it as we have it Cap actually looks halfway decent, but we've got another cap, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. The rotor can only go on one way. Yep. It should be pointing forward, because remember? We remember? It should be pointing That's forward. That's forward, right? No. Remember we had number one pointing over here? It has to be like this. Yep. We may have to... Oh, you got it. Okay. Cap on? Yep, cap has got a notch on it. Mm -hmm. See the notch? See the notch in that? Mm -hmm. So you flip it over, put it on top, see what you got. Okay. Yep. And go ahead and flip the bar thing up. Okay, flip the other one up. Oh, that's really loose. It is. I hate these, but stupid dust covers. I wonder if that's going to give it enough gap. Probably. So that notches in that. Wow. Not really. So it notches there, so you can only put it on one way. Right. And you can't put it 180 out. And what I did is I just kind of put a kink in this a little bit. Yeah. It kind of right. looks like it straightened out a tad. There we go, that's much better. Okay. <clears throat> All right, um, you can go ahead and take the wires off the cap and go ahead and take the this. wires off the plugs. You can just take them all off. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, we have it already set for top dead center number one. Where do I put this one back on? No, we're gonna replace them. Oh. There's your ratchet, you should be able to use that to get the Old plugs out. Oh, I hate doing plugs. Hmm? I hate doing plugs. I'm always scared when I do them. I've never done plugs on a Volkswagen. The ratchet going the right direction? Yeah. I don't even think I was on it. All right, we got plugs changed, everything done, new wires, cap rotor, set the points. Pretty much everything squared away, carbs on, all that done. I do not understand. Those things are blacker than black, nasty. But at the same time, the thing was running, had to be running extremely lean, so. I don't know, we need to go ahead and start cranking, get some fuel into the fuel bowl, and from there, we'll uh, see what's up. See if we can get this thing tuned in with this one. All right, go ahead and start cranking. Go ahead. Keep going. We're gonna have to crank. Get some fuel pressure up or fuel up in the carb. Keep going. Yeah, get fuel up in the carb.
definitely running better. Remember, this is still old gas. So it's a lot better than it was. But we're going to go take it around the block real quick and kind of just see how it does. Ready to go? Yep. Let's so, roll. What's that? Let's roll. Let's roll. I can take the e-brake off now too. Yeah. All right, so here's the biggest thing. Besides the fact I love having brakes. Well guys, thanks for hanging out with us. I greatly appreciate it. So next video, we're gonna go ahead and pull the motor out and uh, we're gonna go ahead and change the intake boots, intake gaskets. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull the top of the motor apart, you know, tins, all that stuff, make sure there's no debris up in there that's gonna cause it to overheat. And we're gonna go ahead and change it from the old, sky, old style oil cooler to the newer style doghouse cooler. So stick around for that. Until the next time guys, be kind to of one another and we'll catch you on the next one. Be good.